Hello everyone, Zyph again. I'm going to try and do some desert mapping today. This has always been one of those things I have considered one of the worst areas to map. So, like usual, I've got my little tile set that I've built of terrains. Um, I'm going to go into View, Snap to Grids. They're easier to select. View, Show my grid. The reason I use these tile sets is so it makes it easy if I build a dozen maps. For a area, I can remember and use the same tiles in each area. I'm going to use this as kind of my base ground. So we'll just fill in a map with oh, pattern fill. Fill the map with that. Uh, I'm going to start building my layer groups. I'm going to do a new layer group for ground. If layer attributes ground. This will be my ground base. I apologize, one day I'm going to buy a new program that will let y'all see the menus and pop-ups as they come out. I try to do as few of them as I can through this. Um, so I'm going to build another new layer. Ground. We'll build a little road going through this. So I'm going to do a ground road. I always like roads. They give the player an idea of what they're supposed to be doing. I'm going to use this kind of a cracked gray. I'll come back over here, do a stamp, do the kind of faded circle, that's good, and need to give it some size, that looks pretty decent, we'll just kind of meander it, it ends up going straight across here, that looks pretty good, now that's a road, but Roads in the desert, sand's going to be blowing all over it, so we need to kind of fix that. I'm going to take another stamp. I'm going to do the eraser tool. And so you can kind of see there, I've got a little bit of a shape to it. And I'm just going to go through my road and start erasing pieces of it. So you can see the roads there, but in most places, sand's kind of blown it over a good bit. I kind of like that. Now, plain old flat terrain, this is boring. We need some hills and stuff in it. So I'm going to make a new layer group. I'm going to call this one Edit Layer Attributes Hills. Move it outside of the ground. Give a new layer. And I'm going to do this one Hill Back. So this will be the back side of my hill. I'll go through all my pieces. There's the back of the hill. Copy it out. And just zoom in a little bit. And just we'll stick a little hill out here. Maybe if the player's coming this way, there can be a little monster or something hiding behind it. Uh, we'll turn the hill down. And then I'm going to do a new layer for the hill front. And then we'll start building the front side of the hill. And I don't like the one with the bump in it, except it's an occasional use, so we'll use this one. And we'll start coming out over here. And let's let it turn in a little bit. So we'll use the corner. Stick that in there. Then we'll start bringing it down again. Now we use just one instance of the bump. Actually, if I would do this, that to grid, it'll make pulling these out a little bit easier. So I have to, no, that's not working out like I wanted. So we'll need to get a way to transition here. We can do that by making a new layer. Inside. So we'll do 
see what we'll do this. I got an idea on what I'm gonna do with it. I'm gonna actually have to tell him to do this. This is the fun part of mapping. So let's see, give me a new layer. I have a lot of layers for this. No, I don't know how I want to name them, so I'm just going to start throwing stuff out there. Let's we'll start bringing in this part of it through here. Then we'll need another corner. And I'm not too worried about how messy some of this looks because we're going to clean it up now. I'm just going to go ahead and blend all of these together. I think there's a merge group, merge all. Um, yeah, I thought there was. I'll just merge them all down. Merge down. Merge down. And then I'm going to go to the um, lasso, the free select tool. Got a radius of 10, looks pretty good. We're going to just start defining the lower shape of this hill. And let's grab this so I can get out to the corner. And I ended up really selecting the hill and that's the part I want to cut away. So I do a select invert. Now I'm deleting the outside of the hill. Then we'll just do the same thing again on the insides. Give it some shape. Maybe it gets a little lower there before it gets higher again. Took the trouble of putting that bump in there. I want to keep it. And we'll come through here. And there, I've given the hill some shape. Got a real ugly looking area right here that we can just fix. We can find a decent decal. Let's try sticking this one in there. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good there. May need to clean this up a little bit. Now I'm going to just take. Um, I'll still use my lasso tool. I'm just going to take part of this image here. Let's see. Grab the corners. Figure out. Get an idea of the shape that I want. I need to come more angled through there. So I really need to be lowering it. Let's try that. I'm copy that. Oh. Have to double click it. Copy that. And we're gonna just paste that little section of rock right into there. And still a little sloppy, so I'll take the eraser, the soft edge, not too big, and we'll clean that up a little bit. And I think I'm happy with that now. And let's see, so we got a hill here, there'll be a little ravine down here, so still taking my cliff pieces. Let's see, where's the down facing piece of the cliff? Grab it. I'm going to start another new layer group for the ra ah. yeah, layer attributes ravine. Take it out of the hill layer, new layer group. Ah, no, new layer. Bring back. And let's just kind of stick it in. 
I don't want it too symmetrical. We'll just stick it over here in the corner. That also kind of helps guide the player. They have to come in through this side and not off a corner. Things like that I always like. I'm actually going to need a corner piece for this. So we're going to make a new layer. Ready for the corner. We're going to put it behind the back. Then we can go put in this corner piece here. Stick it there. And then we'll make a ravine front. And so coming back to these tiles. And actually take that one. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to give it some of this. That was a little too narrow. It's like a little cut in the ground. So we'll do this. Let's make that part of the back. Merge down, then make a new layer again. Front. And then we'll put the other side in there. That's a little bit better. And those parts are good. We just need to clean this edge up a little bit. So again with the lasso two, we'll scroll off the edge. Now we're going to put some sand inside that ravine. So I'm going to do another new layer. It's not that deep of a ravine, it's just a little hole in there. So we'll come back, we'll pick up the sand. I'm going to do a stamp tool. And the feathered edge, make it a little bit bigger maybe. I'm just going to kind of fill in the ravine a little bit. That's a little too feathered. I don't really care for that. So we're going to take the magic wand. Not the magic wand, the lasso. I think I'll stick with 10. It's serving me pretty good right now. And also I ended up with this blurry edge doing this. So I'm going to make sure I cut it off along the actual cliff edge. We need to bring this a little closer in here, like this. Those corners. And again, I cut off the piece I wanted to keep, so I'll do a select invert and just leave that. I'm going to go back to the eraser tool. Give me just kind of a jagged eraser. I'm going to make this one very small. Select none so I can get rid of the selections. That's too small. And just kind of roughen this up a little bit. And then I'm going to make a new layer again. It shouldn't be as bright down in there, so we're going to make some shadows for it. I'll do now the brush, make sure I'm on black. Um, heavily feathered, make this very large. There. Just gonna kind of fill in that ravine a little bit. Again, I can use my lasso tool. Eh, right there, lasso tool. Because I don't want anything extending out of my little ravine. That part of the shadow out. Now we'll just start lowering the opacity. So now it's a little bit darker up in there. And this was a bad place to be. So we're just going to go stick 
Some poor lost soul got trapped up in there at some point. So we'll stick in between the sand and the shadows. Lost soul. Did I not copy? Okay. Now I'm confused. Why isn't he pasting? Pasted layers going nowhere. Ah, my sheet has two layers. I did that at some point. Let's just merge those down. Now copy them. Copy in a blank layer. That doesn't work. There's my lost soul. And so we'll just stick him down in the ravine. At some point somebody may want to make a story about him. Yeah, that was a long detour for a little bit of nothing. Okay, still got a lot of boring terrain here. Let's start making this more interesting. I am going to take the grass tiles that I made over here. I've got the regular green grass. I've taken a recolor of it so I'd have some brown, dead, deadish grass. The one time I was ever in the desert, it wasn't as barren as I thought it would be. There was a lot of brown grasses out there. So we're going to do this. Actually, let me look back. I made sure I got to the corners. Go back to my stamp tool. For this, I want to make sure my stamp is the same size as my graphic, so it's 256. I want to go to the solid one. Zoom out. Ah, I changed my graphics to 256. And then I'm just going to stamp some little dead grasses around. Maybe there's some up closer to the road. I don't like that close to the road, but I do want to kind of join those. It's a little bit up at the corner of that hill. And why am I doing this on the lost soul layer? That wasn't very bright. Undo all of those. Those should be way down here in the ground layer. Those are the kind of things you come back and realize you screwed up way later sometimes. So now that we're putting it in the right place, I had a better idea now of what I wanted from it. Yeah, now it's not sitting on top of the rocks of my mountain. That's much better. And also going to come through here, take some of this more rocky ground. For this I'm going to actually use a more of a brush, same thing, I'm going to make the same size as my graphic 256 and place some kind of around the edges of my cliff, put some around my ravine and again I'm on the same layer, I should be doing this on a totally different layer. Do all of those new layer rocky ground. So now it's underneath the grass. That's better. And some along here. Maybe a little bit under the road. Now we're giving this ground some textures, making it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to come back and do the same thing with this kind of a soily ground. That another new layer, brown soily, good name for it. Um, stamp it. Put some of the. Don't like that at all. This is also going to need to go below the road. So that rocky ground should probably go underneath the road too. And some of it's going up underneath the grass. Giving it a little bit of texture. 
Finally, I'm gonna take. You know, I don't like that ground as much as I thought I did. I'm gonna take all of those out, except through the grassy areas. Just leave it there. I think I like that better. Then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put it on the rocky ground layer again. Oh well. I'm trying to do this way too fast. Now I'm gonna take this. Dirty Grand. This one actually comes out of the um, Plague Bringers tile set. It's one of my favorites. It makes Dirty Ground. I love it. It's the one underneath the road, underneath the grass. So, new layer. Dirty. I'm going to stamp it in in some places. Maybe put some of this. Yeah, I like that underneath the road better kind of helps make it stand out without changing the fact that you're in desert grounds yeah that's not too bad now we're gonna do the rare thing we're gonna just stick a few little patches of the green grass in there and I'm actually gonna use let's try a different stamp for this one Put this more little floral stamp look. I'll put it on top of the brown grasses, brown green grass, and just a couple of little patches where it's got a little bit of life to it. Yeah, maybe some will sneak out away from the others. I think that looks pretty good. Now then, let's decorate this a little bit. Stick a few of the desert trees in there. A bit of desert trees somewhere. These are some gnarly looking little trees. This is my problem with my little tile sets. Okay, grab the tree. Now I'm gonna make a new layer for trees. Stick that outside of the ravine. So I'm going to just stick one up in here in a grassy area. Maybe we'll stick another one. And at this point, I'm kind of also thinking about blocking player movements. Where do I want the player to be able to wander? So by sticking one here, I'm kind of creating them a path they can go up or they can choose to go down. We'll stick a few um, cactuses in there. Yeah, make a new layer for those. Cactus. Yeah, here's a good spot for one. Let's stick another one here. Just kind of stick one kind of off the map halfway again to find in that player movement path and we'll stick one more so we've got three different versions and we'll stick that one there and again overlaying that ravine kind of gives it a little more definition of its depth I like that still looks a little flat so now I'm going to make a new ground layer. Let's call this one Shadows. Now these are coming out of the old, um, uh, what are these? Town and Country set. It's one of the outside layers for it. These little hills are great. Looking at them as little shadows, they don't look like much. But you stick them in your map, and suddenly you've got actual terrain. I'm going to take a different shaped one here. And we'll stick this. Yeah, where do we want another one? Let's stick it in there. Nope. And we'll stick it there. One of the things I really want to do with this is I'm going to take just the shadowed half of this one. And there's 
it's so hard to grab. And do a transform layer, transform, rotate it 90 degrees. That's a better direction for this one. We'll copy it again. Make a second copy of it through here. Now it's kind of putting that whole area up on a hill. And we'll do the same thing for the light half. To do this light half, actually, to be able to grab it, the found is you have to give it a handle. So I'm just going to make a little box, fill it with black. So now I have a handle that makes it easier to grab. And since I'm doing that, I'm going to give it its own new layer. So now I can use this handle layer, transform, rotate it on um, which direction that's going to be clockwise that way. So now I've got a little hill. Um, I'll copy that. Now I'm going to have to go in. Yep. Repaste it. Come in here. I'm going to do a transform, do an arbitrary rotation. So then I can start adjusting it around. It won't work on the most regular tiles, but it works good on these. And give me a second, I gotta get a helper off the keyboard. Oh, that works too. Do rotate. And, ah, that's what's happening. Rotate. Gotta change tools so I can actually grab it and move it into position. And then I can just come back in here, take my two little handles out. Still needs a little something too, but we'll just go back in here, stick a couple of these. There's a little cactus brush here. I know what we can stick in there, it's even better. I'll leave them. Also got some dead sticks. These are also fun to stick in the desert. I think they fit well. Get some of these dead scrub sticks. Stick that up in there. And we can stick another one up here. Take one. Let's change shape so that they don't all look the same. stick that one up here and we'll stick another one no I want a smaller one I think there's a smaller one over here there is and a couple little twigs too this just kind of helps define this is a non walkable area so now we're kind of restricting the player into this pathway so let me get a couple more little twigs. I actually like the way this is starting to turn out. Take that one, I'll stick one here. And another one there. And we just need another little something up there. I know what we can stick in here. We haven't done. We need a few rocks. So we've got some good rock choices through here. Just some little ground pebbles. And again, I'm going to make them a new layer. We'll call that pebbles. And I'm going to stick some up around the edges of the cliff. Definitely need some around the ravine. I'll have to go put some more inside of it, but I'll have to do those on a different layer. Just stick some out here so that it's not all uniform. Change the shape. Yeah, we'll stick some like that. Just kind of adding to those. Stick some there. 
And I want one bigger rock. Something like this. Just kind of out in the middle of all of this. And down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'd like that. Let me do another one. Where are they? They're in here. Let's stick that one kind of up in there. Doesn't fit in there. This there it is. Get some 3D effect. It's underneath the tree. That works. Now I'm going to come back into my ravine. Over the sand. We'll put it in the Lost Souls layer. There's some other rocks here. These are from the um, cliff set. I like these. We're going to stick them all around our poor little lost soul. Where's the other ones? The smaller sets. All these rocks down around where he fell. Maybe he was there when the little ravine collapsed. Okay. The only other thing I want to do is I'm going to take something that's probably too big just to do something with. That, that needs a tree, I think. That's going to need a little bit of grass. Maybe there's some water up there. We're going to have just a little bit of a greener oasis up in that little corner. So I'm going to do a new layer. Maybe there's a little oasis we're not quite going to get to visit on this map. Now I'm going to go back to my brush tool. Stamp this in a little bit. Um, come back to here. And stamp this one over it. And then a little bit of the green grass. trees there we go it's kind of hanging off the edge there that keeps that from being such a boring area and we have I think a decent desert map I hope you all enjoyed this hope you get some ideas from it happy mapping